then we're going to have what uh, the Lord wants us to have, what we want to have. And the Lord just gave us a word. I believe it was for this church, but I, I believe it was for everyone also. It was given here that he was making uh, everything perfect for the harvest. Temperature is going to be right. Rainfall is going to be right. Preparing the soil. Say, well, my brother or my son or my husband or my wife or my daughter, their heart is hardened. The, the, the world has hardened their heart. And I want them to come back to the Lord. I'm going to tell you what. God is able to soften that heart. Amen. He is able. Will he do what we want him to do? And then you hear people say, well, I hope it's just not too late. Will he do what we want him to do? I want him to do it before it's too late. My prayer is, Lord, soften their hearts before it's too late. Protect them. Protect them and keep them safe until they come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. Will he do that? If you say, well, if it's his will, we already know it's his will. Amen? Amen. The Lord is long suffering to us, we're not willing that any should perish, but all should come to repentance. Right? Amen. So we don't even have to think about that. Will he do that extra thing for you, for you, for all of you? That extra little thing because you've asked him to, because you know what the word of God says, you know your purpose. Will he do that little extra thing? I say yes. yes. Amen? Amen? I say yes. I don't need to be in control of the time. I don't need to manipulate things. I don't. I, Jesus might tell me, hey, it's not for you to know the times and the seasons. That's, a, a, that's up to the Father. And he'll take care of that. He's faithful. Amen. You just worry about being empowered. Matthew 28 tells us to go into all the world. Mark 16 tells us to go into all the world. Uh, that we've been given power. Uh, Matthew chapter 10 and Luke chapter 10 tells how... Uh, how uh, Jesus anointed or empowered or gave the disciples, the 12 disciples, authority. And then he called the 70 back and gave, or called the 70 not long after that and gave them authority to do all the stuff and over the demons and all that kind of stuff. And the 70 came back and they were rejoicing. Man, even the devils listen to us. Go find you one. Go find you one. They're easily found. I saw some last night. They been easily found. Uh, go find you one and see. And see. Hmm. I'm reminded just a, a few years ago uh, meeting a young lady at the motel. The time is right. Amen. We have to be faithful. That's right. The last that I talked to her, the last that I saw her, she was serving serving the Lord. And said. I don't know if she's perfect or not yet, but she's serving the Lord. That's right. Amen. Amen. Yes. Wow. How many more of them are out there? Good to be ready. That's right. If it's at the mobile, you better be ready. You better know your purpose. You better know why you're here. You better not be fooling around, or you won't see the harvest. You better not allow your actions to not be aligned with the Word of God. Amen. You won't see those things. Huh. I remember at your house, <laughs> she, I believe she prayed through, but anyway, you jumped up and ran and got a bottle of water and said, let's baptize her. Amen. So, well, I'm kind of a submersion person, but hey, yes, let's baptize this lady. If anybody need to be baptized, she need to be baptized, right? Amen. Oh. What an amazing thing. What an amazing thing. And then y'all, you guys, took on the responsibility, from what I understand, to get her to Teen Challenge and help her and all those kinds of things. And God gave her an angel. Going to all the world. We don't have time to worry too much about 
what we're going to drive or where we're going to live or all those kinds of things because we know our purpose and our purpose is to go into all the world, preach the gospel to every creature, baptizing them, discipling them, teaching them. Let those that are in this region be directed to this place. Help us. Jesus gave us an encouraging word in Matthew chapter 28. Verse 18 through 20 is the mandate, but I like verse 18 because he starts out right. Oh, hallelujah. And, and Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. He said, I want to get this straight. I want to start out right. I want, to, I want you guys to know something. All, before we go into this super important stuff, I want you to know something. All power is given to me in heaven and earth. Amen. You're not going to go out alone. <laughs> You're not going to go out unprepared. You're not going to go out lacking anything. You're not going to go out thinking, can I do this or can I not? No, because you can't, but he can. Amen. And all power has been given to him. All power. And later on in the New Testament, we find out that he's sitting at the right hand of the Father, making intercession for us, right? All power. Yes. What do you need? What do you need this morning? What do you need to accomplish the thing that God has put in your heart? What do you need? Because all power is, has been given to Jesus, and he sits at the right hand of the Father. What do you need? What do you need? Whatever it is that you need, ask for Ask him for it this morning. Believe in your heart and you will have what you ask. It has to happen. He's not a liar. He's not a man who can't lie. We know our purpose. I wonder how many people, how many people God has assigned to sunshine to wings of the Lord. We know He's assigned to quite a few dogs. I know that because I see that. <laughs> Babies are no issue. Yeah. How many people out there on a day-to-day -day basis has God assigned for you to walk into their lives and touch them with the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ? Many times that's why we're battled so much is because the enemy wants to keep us from fulfilling that mandate in our life. Important stuff. Important stuff, right? Important stuff. All power. All power is given to Jesus, your Lord, your Savior. He's making intercession for you. Come on, go ahead and sit. Is the, the election going to come up pretty quick? Amen. Another year or so, we can see a whole lot of things about the election. Is the election... Important to us, take it to the Lord. Ask the Lord. You say, well, there's all kinds of things happening. Well, I don't know. We just we just had some victories happen too. Right? Do we need to go forward? Do we need to be really concerned about that? I think we do need to be concerned about that in our nation. Do we need to be concerned about the things that are going on, on over in Israel? Absolutely we do. Uh, we need to understand. But we also need to remember our mandate. Our mandate is to go out into all the world. Our mandate is to go out into all the world. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and Son of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, uh, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. So he starts out in verse 18 saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and earth. And he ends up saying, I am going to be with you. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> you cannot go anywhere without him being with you. 
What is important to you is important to him. He starts out by saying, okay, all power is given to me. So you'll get kind of excited. All right, all right. Because you already know he's your Savior, right? You've already told him, I'll go where you want me to go. I'll stay where you want me to stay. I'll do what you want me to do. You've already told him all that. He takes those things serious, too. Amen. So all power is given. And then he says, I'll never leave you. Till the end of the world. End of the world. Never. Man, what are we waiting for? What are we waiting for? That homeless person or that person on the on the uh, the uh, street or or wherever in the store? And I'm a, I'm kind of amazed sometimes at at uh, uh, people. You know, the Lord blesses me with a bunch of stuff, and I put it on a trailer, and I buy it by the pallet loads, and I get diapers. I get hygiene products. I get women's hygiene products. And I get all kinds of stuff, right? So I can pull, if I'm going to Oklahoma with three or four pallets on my trailer, I pull into Walmart, and it's, it's pretty obvious what I got. I mean, people will come over. People are needy. They have needs. Now, I want to tell you what. I have everything I have need of. The Lord has blessed me. Amen. And when I need something, I need something. But there are people out there that have not, they just have not been trained yet or they've not learned yet, and they're, they're needy. You know? so I don't mean that in a bad way. And they'll come, and I went to Walmart, went into Walmart, I came out, and there was a lady up on my trailer looking in my stuff, and she had a couple of handfuls of women's stuff. And, uh, and uh, she said, uh, is, is this for sale? And I said, no, it's not. She said, oh, I really, I really need this. I really do need this. And I'm like, okay, we don't wanna, I don't want to have that discussion here in the park. But, uh, I said, no, it's not for sale, but you can take whatever you want. And she did. Now another woman come up, another young lady come up, another older woman come up and got diapers and toothpaste and all those kinds of things. I was telling them about Jesus and how God gave that to us and all of that. And they're, they're everywhere. Yes. They're, they're everywhere. Yes. All we have to do is say, Lord, I know my purpose. Yes. I also know that you have empowered me. Yes. I know my purpose. I know you have empowered me. I know you're with me. Let's go. Feed the, the hungry, uh, you want to feed the masses, and but, hey, we need a food trailer, or we need this, or we need that. Well, no, really, all you need is probably a, a, a ice chest with some sandwiches in it, and, and maybe a, a wheelbarrow, or if you have a car, a car, and go out and find some hungry people and give them sandwiches. That's a start. Amen. To whom is who is faithful in the little, God will make ruler over the grace. Right? Amen. Looking for a pulpit? I guarantee you. I guarantee you. You can go out and find. You can go to the to the nursing homes. Amen. They're starved for the gospel. They're star you can go many places. We're faithful in the little, and He'll make us ruler over the great. So we know our purpose. We've been empowered. Now there's one other thing that we we have to be. Or we have to do. And that is, we have to persevere. Purpose, power, and perseverance. Purpose, power, and perseverance. Without perseverance, you'll never finish your race. Amen. Amen. Second Timothy chapter 1, verse 6, it says... Wherefore I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God which is in thee by the putting on of my hands. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and a sound mind. We need to have power. We need to have confidence. We need to have determination. We need to understand that God is with us. We cannot lose unless we quit. 
We cannot fail unless we give up. And the more of God's word that we know, the more we align with, and then the more of God's promises are right there with us. That's why it's so important for all of us to come together and speak freely with each other. The word of God and, and fellowship and have Bible studies in church or read scripture together or worship together, all of these things, because we get stronger and stronger and stronger, and we're more able to go out and accomplish the purpose that God has for us. His purpose is to build the kingdom. His purpose is to bring those that are lost into the kingdom. His purpose is to provide those people that have nothing with whatever they need. Can you do that? Absolutely. Last year we planted a church and I was talking to a young man. He was uh, called to be a pastor, but he never had an opportunity to do that. And and he wanted to plant a church. I wanted to plant a church. So we knew each other for about, I don't know, maybe a year. And we decided to plant a church. And, and uh, so when it got down to the, to the doing it, he said, uh, uh, so we haven't talked much about the finances yet. What are we going to do in finances? Because we're going to have to rent a building or buy a building or whatever. And, uh, and he said, so what, what are we going to do there? Because up until this point, there's, there's no money, right? You know? And uh, I said, oh, well, the money will, when we get ready to do it, the money will be there. And, uh, and I said, and if it's not, I'll just finance it myself. He said, oh, okay. I didn't realize you had those kind of finances. Oh, I got them. I got them. Amen? Amen. So we went and looked at some buildings. We picked one out and decided it was a movie theater. We rented a movie theater. And we went out to eat. And uh, I was sitting there eating, and I got a phone call, and I needed to take it because it was a, a man that, uh, he was a business man that I knew, and I had done some work for him and stuff, and we were friends. And uh, I took the phone call, the pastor was sitting across the table from me, took the phone call, I said, hey, Carrie, how are you doing? I said, man, I'm doing good. How are you? And I said, I'm in Oklahoma right now. And he said, I heard you were about to plant a church up there. And uh, I said, yeah. And in fact, we, we uh, uh, just found a building, and all this. He said, well, what is it going to cost you? What's it going to cost you? And I, and I told him, he said, okay, I'm going to pay for the first four months. <laughs> Got home, back to Texas the next day or two. Uh, and that evening, a man pulled up in my driveway with a with a uh, envelope full of cash that would pay for the first four months. We don't need to worry too much about what about God doing what he said he did. Amen. We just need to be faithful in doing what we Amen? We have been empowered, not just physically, not just spiritually, but we have also been empowered financially. Amen? Hallelujah. Will he do it? Yeah, he will do it. He will give us the desires of our heart. Do you really believe it? I believe it. And the more you see it, the easier it is to believe. Right? But I believe he wants to do it. Will he... Will he raise you up, brother, JT, to be a financier of the kingdom more than you are even right now? Will he raise y'all up? Yes. yes, he will. Yes. I miss you all so much. Will he do that? Yes, he will. All power. Is God going to do what he said he would do right here in this place, in this region? Yes, he is. And now we have a word from the Lord that says he's made everything perfect for a harvest. He's expedited it. He's increased it. Maybe you want to maybe you want to see a little more before we leave here. I was looking in my coat. Uh, pocket earlier. I put it on come in here and I had something in the pocket and I, I, uh, I, I pulled it out and it was uh, uh, a funeral advertisement of my friend. Y'all probably saw her on Facebook, Mary, Mary Lee Thomas. Mm -hmm. She used to live in this area. In fact, she used to go to church where you and Linda went to church uh, there. And, uh, and 
and she's a very special friend to me uh, up in Oklahoma. She was in Mahia for a while, Houston for a while. But anyway, we talked uh, two days. I went to Oklahoma and we had lunch and talked to, uh, to her two days before and we were talking and, uh, and she, well, she was making plans, right? Because she was about to have open heart surgery and she was 80, 84 years old. She's about to have open heart surgery and the doctor didn't tell her that chances were, were uh, not very good and all this kind of stuff. And she said, but Carrie, I can't do what God's called me to do like I am, so I want to get to this operation so I can get back to doing what God's called me to do because there's things to be done. Right? And uh, so we had lunch and she talked and she said, so there's something I need you to know. Okay? And she was a very powerful woman of God. Powerful woman of God. Very straightforward. Some people probably would have thought she was a little little rough, but uh, very strong woman of God. And she said, remember this. Always forgive. Mm -hmm. Don't get caught up in all the little things. They're distractions. She said, when you get distracted from what God has called you to do, it doesn't get done. And we know the word of God says, you must forgive. Amen. And I always like to tell people, not, not forgive like man forgives. I like God's kind of forgiveness. Put it away as far as the east is from the west. Amen. You, know, you hear that we fall back on that sometimes. Well, I forgive, but I'm not going to forget. Eh. I want to forget, Lord. Mm -hmm. I want to move on without any distractions. Because when we come out from underneath, the alignment of God's word, we're distracted and we can't get done what God has called us to do. What has he called us to do? The work is great. But Sister Mary said, forgive. <laughs> she kind of laughed. <laughs> and, and if the Lord calls me home during the surgery and you get to uh, uh, do my funeral uh, because I have requested it, uh, Preach forgiveness. Yes. <laughs> I said, okay. Wow. <laughs> so I did. We can't be distracted. Mm -hmm. We know our purpose. <coughs> all power. Right? Yes. And we're going to persevere. Why? Because the Bible tells us. We will reap what we sow. In due season. If we faint not, we'll persevere. So what is it, sister? What is it that, that the Lord, and what is it that you have in your heart that you want the Lord to do? Because it's on his heart too. movement, you've not, you not seen much change, and the Lord is just like dusting, oh no, we're about to do this thing. Amen. Nothing's changed, church. We're a year older, I'm about to have a birthday in February, I mean, you're going to be a year older, nothing's changed. From 1991, and when I left Houston uh, to plant the first church, and I was smart too, I was much smarter then than I am now. Uh, you could just ask me and I would have told you. And I knew how to do it all. Nothing's changed, though. Nothing's changed. What are we going to do? We're going to find that young pastor, our pastors. And we're going to use the power that God has given us to plant them somewhere to build God's kingdom. And when they fail, we're going to be right there by them. Amen. You're not going to hear a whole lot of criticism from me. Amen. You're not going to hear a whole lot of, well, you should have done this different. Or remember, no, no, you're not going to hear any of that from me. Mm -hmm. You're going to see me walk beside them and walk them through this so they can become Amen. who God yes. has called them Amen. to become. Yes. We are empowered to do 
such as that. Yes. There is nothing that can stand in our way. There is nothing. All power is given in heaven and earth to your Savior, to your Lord Jesus. Amen. And we will persevere. Will we not? We will not quit. We will raise up every little stone Every little stone, and under those stones will be those that are weighted down with the world that are just waiting for someone to come by and pick them up. Amen. We will not entice them with softness and soft words. And in fact, there will be times that we will be abrasive. But we will raise them up. We will raise them up. What? <laughs> What's God doing in this season? I know a little bit about what he's done in past seasons. God has served them. The anointing, the anointing that is upon your life, both of your lives, is power. You find those people that you can breathe into, and you breathe into them. I've heard of some people, I've heard from some people, a dear friend, Linda, was one of them, how you breathed into her life. That wisdom and that knowledge. You have the power. You have the power. You have the power, don't you? You have the power to do exactly what God has called you to do. It's not a power struggle. Amen? There's going to be times in your life that you're going to look at sunshine and you're going to say, stop, be quiet. <laughs> it's going to be your responsibility, sunshine, to say, okay. There's going to be times in, in your life, sunshine, that you're going to look at him and say, be quiet. <laughs> it's going to be your responsibility to say, okay. It's not a man thing. It's not a, it's not a woman thing. <laughs> but God has a tremendous purpose for y'all and your children. Raise them up. Get ready. All powers given to your Lord. Do we truly believe that God is doing what He promised to do? We must. We must. When you bring the light into the room, darkness is expelled. We know that. You have the power to say to those that carry darkness, leave. Amen. And they'll leave. They will not try to stay. Just pass on to us that knowledge and that wisdom that you have, sister. Impart to us. We're listening.
We understand and we know our purpose. We know we've been empowered and we know we're not going to quit. I told Les that it was good to see him. Hadn't seen him in a few years doing his uh, flags and hadn't seen him dancing. I've, ex- I've, I've tried to describe your dances sometimes in meetings that I've done and I didn't even know your name back then. But I would tell people, I know a man, I've seen a man that goes to Sister Carolyn's church that dances and praises the Lord. And I said to them, I wish I could do that. <laughs> Amen. It was happy to see you here. Carry on. Persevere. Yes. God has a has a calling in your life. Continue on. Bring up those. I saw one up there this morning. Bring them up. Teach them. How are you doing? How are you? Amen. What are you doing today for the Lord? Okay. Because it's just bubbling over in, in your life. The presence of the Lord, the ability, the gifts, the talents. What do you want to do? That's what the Lord is saying. What do you want to do? Door number one, door number two, door number three. I can do them all. You, you can do them all. <laughs> and you can do it. All power. All power. There's no obstacle that can keep you from accomplishing what God has put upon your heart. Everyone's not going to be with you at all times. They're not going to back you up. But you don't need them. There will be some that come along. Amen. What would you like from the Lord, Mary? Amen. Healing. Healing. Okay, come, come on. Come up, please. Let's have the ladies come up. Some more ladies. Come up also. She wants healing. sick among us, call for the elders of the church, pray for the sick, anoint them with oil, and the prayer of faith to save the sick, and they committed any sins that they forgiven. Your word says, as our brother last night so powerfully showed us and reminded us, that we have authority over sickness. We learned this morning, or have been reminded this morning, that you're with us. So we speak to this sickness. We speak to this sickness in the name of Jesus and we say be gone be removed be cast into the sea we will have what we ask for can you share with us what it is or is it something proper Father in the name of Jesus we lay hands on our sister ladies just lay your hands on her we lay hands on our sister and we declare and pronounce announce healing Healing. Yes. Healing in every part of her body. Healing. Healing. There's nothing that will remain undone in this body. Every part of her digestive tract, every part of her gut, every part of her. Yes. Healed in Jesus' name. No pain, no discomfort, no so anything that had been causing her a problem, go away. We have authority over you, and we take that authority right now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, and we send you on your way, and this body be healed, be perfect in Jesus' name. Let it be so. Hallelujah. Let there be a physical manifestation, a physical manifestation in this body. Let there be heat. Let there be warmth and let her feel the healing take place right now. Right now. Are you feeling anything? Feeling? Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Feel something. Heat. The fire of the Lord 
anything that's there that's not supposed to be there, be detached and pass from her body. Pass from her body. Heal. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Feel it. Feel it. time and prayed for a man who was in our church and he had had fourth stage colon cancer and uh, they had gone in and done an operation. They had to attach the tumor was large. They had to attach it and pull it over to the side so his uh, bowels were working. So he came to us one Sunday morning and he was going down to MD Anderson for a checkup and he, he said he wanted to be healed. I said, what do you want? And uh, he, he said, I, I just want this tumor to be gone. And I said, okay. So we just prayed in the name of Jesus, anointed him with oil. I commanded that tumor to detach and be removed from his body. And he went down that day to MD Anderson in the middle of the night, that Sunday night, because he was supposed to be there Monday morning for tests. Uh, his wife called me and said, I guess that's big enough over here. Right there. His wife called me and said, Oh, Jimmy's just had to be taken to the hospital. Uh, he's having he's hemorrhaging and all kinds of stuff going on. And I said, okay, well, whatever. So, got to the hospital and they did test on him, and the tumor had broke loose uh, and detached from his body. He had passed it at the motel. It was kind of gross. But, uh, but the problem was that, that little stainless steel attachment thing that was attached to the tumor and over to the side wall of his colon. Uh, it was ripped out too, and it caused a lot of bleeding. But, but he was fine, other than he lost a lot of blood. And the doctor said, there is no explanation for this. And Jimmy was a very young Christian, hadn't been saved very long. Uh, he was an older man, but he was a very young Christian. And uh, he said, I have an explanation. So my pastor uh, told it to detach and, and remove from my body, and, uh, and I believe it's going to happen, and it happened. And uh, the doctor told him, he said, well, you might want to give him, might want to give him all the details next time and tell him to let the little thing, the little tool stay in there. <laughs> I want to tell you what, when we pray and believe and we know we're empowered and we know our purpose, do we have a purpose? Yes. Do you have a purpose, sister? Yes. And we know that Jesus is with us yes. and we are empowered to accomplish it. Will you fail? No. Are you cut out to do this thing? Maybe not. But if God has put it in your heart, if it aligns with the Word of God, you can do it. Amen. Do you need to position yourself under authority? Yes. Because to have authority, we have to be under authority, right? Amen. I'm just covering some general things right now. Because God wants to do what it is that you want to do for Him in the kingdom. You can't. Fail. Unless you quit. Amen. Spiritual authority. God himself is our ultimate authority, but we need pastors uh, over us. I have three pastors over me that I'm in authority to. They could call me. They, well, they probably wouldn't call me right now. But they could call me. I would answer the phone or I would go to them. One's in Kentucky. One's, in, one's here in Houston. And one's over in Tyler. I would go and hear if there was correction there, I would be corrected. Uh, Sister Carolyn has corrected me before. Sister Carolyn has corrected me before, and then I listen. I listen. So we have to have that kind of authority in our life. If we're going to carry authority, it won't happen. So that's what I'm, I'm talking about. So you'll, you'll need that to accomplish, accomplish this, this task. Because when we step out, out of the line of God's word, we lose that power. We lose that covering. You need it. We need it. I need it. May the anointing of the Lord be upon you. May the anointing of the Lord be upon you to accomplish and do all that he's called you to accomplish. 
There are those that have said that you couldn't do it and that you're not called to do it. There's no need in, in listening to them. The voice of God is much louder. Yes. Much clearer. But there are those that God has put in your life that can be authority in your life that will love you and cherish you and help you to accomplish the thing that God has called you to accomplish. There are no mountains too, too high. There are no mountains too big. So we say to those mountains, to those obstacles, be removed and be cast into the sea. Let it start this morning. Be removed and be cast into the sea. And Lord Jesus, we say yes. No. We say yes. Isaiah, when God called Isaiah, Isaiah's first response was, I'm a man of unclean lips and I'm in a, amongst the people of unclean lips. And then he, the, the angel took the coal of fire and put on his lips. In other words, God just took care of that. But he was called. Then God said, Who will I send? And Isaiah said, Here am I, Lord, send me. Right? He went from being called to chosen because he chose. And then God sent him to me. Because he chose. Because he said, Yes, Lord. There are many that are called today. There are many that are called today. It's not just this is not just for you. But there are many that are called today that haven't stepped from that called spot to that chosen place because they haven't chosen. They haven't said. And like I said, that's that word right there is not specifically for you. What is God doing in your life? Step out there and say, stop in the name of Jesus. I see you sitting at a four-way stop, four-way stop sign, intersection of the four-way stop. And traffic's coming, and you say out loud, and this is more of a spiritual thing, you say out loud, I've been here before. This is not new to me. I need to be careful. I need to be careful. Those coming from the right. Those coming from the left, those coming from that direction, 
but I am equipped for these intercessions in life. Not only are you equipped for these intercessions, but you're equipped to teach those that will learn. Now those could be young women, those could be young men, those could be older men, those could be older women. That, that has nothing to do with it. But you have been equipped to teach those that are about to come to those intersections in life and teach them to be safe. I've traveled that road. I know. Be confident, be strong, be tender, all those things are you. I know. You be you. But you're going to see some more of those four way stops. And they're going to be people with you. And you're going to teach them. And they're going to be forever thankful, sister, for what you impart to them. May the blessing of the Lord rest. May the blessing of the Lord and the anointing of the Lord rest. I observed something this morning, sister. I, I observed part of this uh, a lot of times. Very strong people in this church. Very, very strong. Very strong personality. Uh, women, very strong women uh, in this church. But I, I witnessed something this morning as during worship and as y'all was preparing for worship and the way that y'all were talking and saying... Uh, we're going to do this, and hey, this is not a duo, uh, uh, different things, and, and just, just things, just things like that. But there's a lot, there was a lot more that I heard, uh, and, and there's a lot of strength there. There's a lot of, uh, we're not just flopping around out here, you know, throwing something up against the wall and see if it sticks. No, we have a purpose. We know the world, the body of Christ needs that. But I also noticed that there was no harsh feelings. There was no meanness. There was no, there was the love of Christ. Amen. Teach us. Teach us. God deserves excellence. 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 Exactly right. And we do. And we do. Teach us. Amen. Mm -hmm. Father, you know the heart of this woman of God. As she reaches out to you right now, as she reaches out to you right now, give her the desires of her heart. Give her the desires of her heart. Open up the doors. Open up the doors. Let those ears that are not listening Those that have found offense, let the offense be removed, be healed. The Lord says he's going to turn offense into influence. There, there are some that have been offended, some that, that are close to you, some that mean a lot to you, that have been offended, uh, no fault of your own. Their own fault, but we're not talking about faults. It's, we're not talking about faults. It's not important. But the Lord said He's going to turn offense into influence. Hey, sister, can you come up? So, I couldn't come out there. This young lady, this young lady right here, has the anointing. To be able to create things. Aww. Has the anointing to create things that are not created that you. You have that entrepreneurial uh, anointing upon your life. If you choose to open up a business, you will be able to, and God will use you. If that's your choice. I know you have your hands full with these babies. But if that's your choice, God will make it happen, whatever, whatever it is. So how do you get started? If you choose to do this, how do you get started? What do you have in your house? You look at your house, because we 
have a tendency, oh well, to get started, we need about you know three or four hundred thousand dollars and we need to rent a building and we need to buy this, this, and this. No, no, that's not the way God does it, because God's going to get the glory in this. What do you have in your house to get started with as a seed? And you begin with that. I know you already do that with your knitting and your crochet. I see you're wearing something. Okay. Uh, that's a seed. Amen. But I want you to know that the Lord has told me many times when I look at your stuff on Facebook, I put the anointing in your life. So don't question your ability or your ability to do it. You do have the ability to do it. Just do you want to. And can you do it and raise your family to it? Does that make sense to you? Father, bless her in the name of Jesus and her husband and her children. Open up those doors and give her the desires of her heart. Every financial thing in Jesus' name. Amen. I've never seen a child so attentive. Not attentive. <laughs> <laughs> she was You know, those are our next generations. We have to be a we have to be a church that are in love with the children. Amen. Yes. We have to be a church that are in love with the children. What is God doing right now? What is God doing? There hasn't been a big switch up. He's not calling for the last scene. So for us to get, you know, get ready to go. Well, you know, I think we should stay ready to go, right? bring about the mandate that he's given us. Do you have the power? You do. Is he with you? He is. Are things not exactly like you want them? Well, speak to them. Speak to them. Don't give up. Just speak to them. Persevere. All power. If he were going to say something to you verbally, he would say this. All power is given to me in heaven and earth. And then he would remind you as you find your way, maybe walking out of the room, he would, he would remind you, oh, I'm with you too. I'm with you. Lo, I'm Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I thank you for this man. I ask you, O Lord, to anoint him in a way that he can go forth from this place and do all, all that you've called him to do. This is not, uh, this is not a time to retire. This is a time to refire. Much wisdom that you can give, sir. Much wisdom. There will be some that want to hear it. There will be some that don't. Don't worry about the ones that don't. Just focus on the one. Go forth. Go forth and impart. We're going to be waiting. And we're going to be listening. To hear what you have to say. And when I say we, I mean the ears that the Lord has, has opened up. That's my own. What's God going to do here, Pastor? Me and Sonia were talking before church. We were talking about the cross. We were talking about this cross. We were talking about the building. And we were just talking. What's God going to really do? Because there's a lot of things that you've asked for. And the Lord reminded me this morning that, I don't know, a few years ago, uh, I, I spoke a word to you that if you want a building, God will give you one. But it's not the building that, a building can't house what you've built. Mm -hmm. 
That was somewhat of the word. But you didn't want one because you had one. And he's going to give you everything else that you want. That's what he's going to do yes. in these years. Yes. So you make your list. Yes. For you have been found faithful. Yes. You have been found faithful. And he has given you grace. So he's going to give you whatever it is that you want. Let it be so. Is there anybody else that wants prayer before we... Sonia, I had to pray for Sonia. What would you like to the Lord? Physical miracle? Financial miracle? Amen. Do you believe he'll do it? Amen. I, I agree with you. I agree. Father, first of all, we just come against anything that's come against him. By our faith. Yes. Our faith. By my faith. My faith, Lord. Just like Peter said, silver and gold have I none, but what I have I'm about to give you, buddy. Well, I say that to this man. I say that this to this man right here. By my faith, Lord. May those miracles happen in his life. May those things change that need to be changed. May those miracles come into his life as he has asked for them. Let nothing be held back. Nothing be held back in the name of Jesus. Do what you want done. And we pronounce healing upon him. In him. We pronounce healing. In his body, in his mind, in his finances, in the physical and spiritual. Healing. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. We know our purpose. We know we have power, and we're going to persevere, aren't we? Amen. This is a new day. This is a new evening. Hey, baby girl. Hi. Want to pray for the babies? Or? Father, I just pray for these babies. They're miracles in the name of Jesus. Father, we just ask you, O oh Lord, for total healing and protection. Total healing and protection. The enemy has tried to cause a distraction, but we say in the name of Jesus, they are protected. Protected in Jesus' mighty name. We're not worried. We're not concerned. We don't have anxiety. We're, they're in your hands, Lord, and we, we put them in your hands. We trust you with them, Lord, in Jesus' name. Father, I just pray for this family. Bind them together, Lord, with cords of love that are unbreakable. Give them understanding for each other. Move them into this next season of life. Bound together with cords of love. Let them enjoy. Enjoy. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you all. Julio, would you like to have prayer? You okay? Amen. Okay. Sonia, do you want prayer? Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I see. Do, do you shoot any? Do you shoot guns or anything like that? Have you ever shot guns? I see you laying uh, prone, prone position. That's laying on your belly with a rifle, a scope. And there's a target out there that you're, you're, you have the crosshairs on, and you're getting ready. You're just like, I'm, but you haven't pulled the trigger yet. No. The Lord says, send it. Pull the trigger. It'll hit the target that it's supposed to hit. Don't worry about missing. Don't worry about stray bullet. Don't worry about any of those things that are out of your control. Pull the trigger, and in the shooter's terms, send it. Does that make sense to you? 
Father, in the name of Jesus, I lay my hands upon this woman of God. Let the anointing, let the anointing be upon her to make the decisions that the decisions that she needs to make. We'll not reason it out. We'll just believe in you, Lord. We'll not think about, well, the consequent this, that, and the other. No, we're just going to trust in you and do what your word says. We're about to send it, Lord, as you have said. Let it be so. Bless her. Give her the desires of her heart for herself and her family. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
miracles too. So, hallelujah. But praise the Lord and we continue on and we see all the wonderful work that Tom Turlin has got done around here. Give him the glory. Him and Diana for all their work on this building. Be sure they get the glory. And you're dismissed. And see you tonight. Now, if you need any more prayer, come back tonight and see you Amen. Amen.